Do you want to know how to Vana wrap your door handle the easiest way possible? I'm going to show you how to do that today. What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps and I have this awesome new tool from SignMaker Tools. I'm going to show you how to use it, what you can do with it. Uh, mainly this one that I have right here, this is the Wrap You Easy Flat. This is meant for door handles. There is another one meant for shark fin antennas, which I will do a separate video on to show you how effective this tool is. I'm going to show you how I do this myself without this tool and also with this tool. This way you can compare the difference between the two tools. This tool will be directly linked in the description below. So if you're looking to pick it up, go for it. Obviously, this can drastically reduce your downtime when it comes to wrapping a vehicle. Two handles, four handles, six or eight handles, depends on what you have as far as the car goes. Could be a limousine with more doors, who knows? Anyways, if you guys are looking for those professional how-to vinyl wrap videos, you gotta check out my website, ckwraps.com. The link is in the top corner and the description below for you where we have an open forum discussion board Wrap of the month contest. You guys ask me questions. I answer them directly for you in order to help you complete your projects and get your wraps done much easier. I want you guys to succeed. Let's get into this tool. So this tool, like the mirror tool, is a little bit different. Like the mirror tool, I said, right? Shaped in a U shape. And uh, this one is not made out of wood. This is flatter. And it is actually made out of a more, well, not more durable, but a nice plastic. And it's a little bit more bendy. Does the bendy part play a role in anything. I'm not really sure yet. I haven't really tested this to the full extreme. We have a door handle and it's off the car. Now you can do this with the door handle on the car. There are some areas that can be tricky to wrap like on the inside. So keep that in mind if you're not removing your door handle and you need to wrap this area in here, that can be tricky with your door handle left on the car. I have my door handle removed from the car and in most cases, it's easy to remove a door handle from a vehicle. I show you many different doors, many different cars, on my website, ckrapps.com. So if you're looking for disassembly, it's all there too. Now, I have my vinyl, and this vinyl is a little bit interesting, okay? So this is a brushed textured vinyl. This textured vinyl actually is important that we do not stretch this too much in one area over another. What we want to do is consistently stretch the film over one large area. Now, when, when it comes to wrapping a door handle without something like this, what you'll find is you'll simply only be able to place tension in one area, which is normally at the end because you're holding the handle with your other hand. So you're trying to hold the handle with one hand and you're trying to pull it across with the other. That normally creates wrinkles going across. I'm gonna show you that exact demonstration. This tool, what it does is it actually creates an even amount of tension all the way around from you know, the front right over here to the back area. Super important. Um, this actually minimizes or completely eliminates any wrinkles you might get when pulling across. Not only that, we have good control with this because we can really only stretch the vinyl with an even amount of tension, which for a product like this, and I'm stretching this the wrong way, this, this uh, brushed metal grain, I'm gonna be stretching this the wrong way. So keep that in mind, I'm doing this deliberately. But I'm gonna, show you the differences between the two. So we need to actually, when we're installing brush metal, we need to actually distribute the tension across the handle very evenly, um, especially when we're stretching it the wrong way, because we want the pattern to not be too tight in some areas and not be too wide in other areas or wider in other areas. That's important. If it's too tight here and wider here, that's gonna show a difference between those areas. If it's consistently stretched all the way across, that's going to minimize or completely eliminate your, your attention to the fact that the brush metal has been stretched out. Now, on top of that, this is going to, again, disperse tension very evenly. So when it comes to durability, that's very important. We want our vinyls, our, our wrapped pieces to last as long as possible. Anyways, let's just get into this. I'm gonna wipe this down with isopropyl alcohol and uh, we're gonna wrap it. I'm going to show you a little trick when it comes to using this tool. Just helps a little bit. It's nothing crazy, but uh, when it comes to using this, and very similar to the mirror wrap one, it works very similarly. It's just not as big. Now, can you use the mirror wrap, wrap one for this one? Yeah, the wrap you easy original. Probably could, but you're going to be wasting a lot of oil, and there's just no point in that. 
Also, this has a, ha a built-in handle, which actually makes things a lot easier from the times that I used it. So just keep that in mind. Now, what I like to do is, let's move that over. Let's take our vinyl, let's move our handle. Let's take our vinyl and let's actually place our vinyl. I'm gonna peel off the film. I'm gonna place that with the adhesive side facing up. Let's just throw that piece of paper away. Great. Now this piece of vinyl is bigger than I needed it to be. I just had a scrap piece laying around. I had another scrap piece laying around, so I'm using these pieces. If you find that your vinyl is too big, then you can cut some off. You don't want it to be too, too big. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up one side here, and you're gonna see. So I have the adhesive side facing up. Now this does leave it vulnerable to, you know, the adhesive getting things stuck to it, and especially with me talking in front of it right now, it's possible I'm taking my time here, but it's a small piece. We can grab a new piece if something happens. We're gonna press this down on the actual film. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to trim off some of this. Let's take our knife and let's just get rid of some of this film. Let's do that. Come across the front here. And that's gonna tremendously reduce, you know, just stuff that's kind of in my way. Now, I can hold this piece, right? And hold it really nicely. We're gonna smooth this down, because it's not airtight. So let's smooth all that down. This is a black brushed metal, in case anyone's asking. Beautiful. There is some excess on the left, tiny bit, of, sorry, a little bit on the right, tiny bit on the left. It's totally fine. What we're gonna do next is I'm gonna put my handle down on the table. We're gonna take our heat gun and we're going to hit this with some heat. Now what you're gonna see is you're gonna see the film move. It's gonna wrinkle and then tighten, which it already did just now. Basically what's happening there is the vinyl is pre-shrinking. So all vinyls shrink from the factory. Now I'm just gonna keep fanning this with heat, I'm done, but I'm just gonna keep fanning it with heat because I'm talking. So all vinyls pre-shrink from the factory. It's a really good idea to pre-shrink them before you actually wrap. Um, it helps for longevity purposes. Okay, so we're good to go. Now I'm gonna put my heat gun down. I'm gonna take my Wrap Your Easy Flat. I'm gonna start at the very front of the handle, just like this. I'm gonna hook that in at the very front, no tension, and we're gonna pull that really evenly down and past, just like that. Done, okay, I'm gonna hold that right there. If you want to see that again, I can do that again. So I'll actually turn the door handle facing you this time. You saw that from the side. This vinyl isn't destroyed. We can actually just take a heat gun, stick that back down right there. We've got some wrinkles that happen right there. That's okay. Let's make sure we shrink it back down. Vinyl will more or less go back to its original shape minus this little area here because it's just stuck. There we go. Let's smooth that out. Let's add a little bit more heat to it. So again, we're just gonna add a bit more heat to it. Now, will the vinyl pre-shrink again? No, it will not. So it will not go through that motion of getting wrinkles and then those flattening out again. So to show you again, more in your direction, we're gonna take this handle, I'm gonna hook it in on the front, and we're gonna pull that back really nicely. Now, I'm way too far off because I can't see. I have to center this more. So again, we can try this again. It's not over. This is, well, I would have been done already, but that, that just happened because I can't see. So we're gonna shrink that down, let's fix that up. We don't want to uh, start with any wrinkles, it's very important, so it's very important to make sure that we don't have any. Cool, let's tighten that up, great. I'm just gonna leave the heat gun running for a second here, and I'm gonna wave this right over top, and let's try to stand up and show you exactly what's happening here. Oops, got a little hot there. So let's go from here. And I don't want to stretch it right, like way past the very end of the handle, which means this area to my right side. Let's turn the heat gun off. Let's cut this out. Be careful when you do this. Obviously, you don't want to cut yourself. So I'm going to cut that out right there. Let's bring this all the way around. Let's bring this around and come all the way through here. Cool. I'm gonna point out something that I noticed right off the bat. There are zero wrinkles in this handle, okay, none. 
at all. Be like this is greatly beneficial. Why? Because we don't have to pull any of these wrinkles out. So if I was to be, for example, doing this handle in Chrome, well, I could probably get this done, I'd be more likely to get this done with this tool as opposed to in one piece, as opposed to doing this by hand. Now, what I want you to notice here, watch the vinyl, just, I just hit this side accidentally. So watch the vinyl on this side and then I'll show you the other side. You're gonna see it shrink down and around, okay? That is super important. Let's check out the other side. You can see that the vinyl is already going down and around that side. Yeah, I probably hit it with a bit of heat, but let's just see. So this door handle on the nose here has no tension on it. There's a little bit up here, that's okay. It's not even stuck down to the handle yet. And it's not even pulling back, okay? This area is where the uh, door handle usually fails, right in the nose. So it's important that we actually start from this area and pull it towards the back. Now the back shouldn't have any wrinkles unless we stretch past the very end of it. It doesn't. So that's good. It means we stopped on time. We didn't keep aggressively stretching way past this edge right here. I'm going to finish this off and we're going to trim it out and that's going to be it. This is the door handle. That was, so it was literally as simple as the first try and I could have been finished a long time ago. And I try to put it into a different view to show you how to do that, um, to show you in a different point of view. Let's add a little bit of heat to the inside here. Now, a door handle like this, I'm not gonna do it today, but I would recommend, so I'm not leaving this like this, I would recommend putting an overlay on the inside afterwards. Just FYI. I don't even have enough here to hold on to. Give me one second. A small, small wrinkle. Just gotta get that out. Cool. So same thing over here. Let's add a bit of heat to the inside there and there. Done. Let's squeegee or push the film into this area here. Now, why do we want to put an overlay in here? Well, because this is a very high tension area. And if we don't put an overlay in there, we run the risk of the film bubbling out of the inside of the handle. Now, this is not true for all handles because some handles have black plastic on the inside. So they have the sensor um, in the handle. And this one doesn't have a sensor in the handle. It just looks like it does. It has a little fake button. What I would do here is most likely use knife state, but just so you know, I can show you very quickly here, trim some of this film back. And then the next, the last piece would overlap the main piece, which would in, ter would in turn help hold the main piece down. Now we don't want obviously our wrap lifting up and with door handles, door handles can be very vulnerable because you know, people are grabbing them. The driver might be aware that their vehicle's wrapped, but you know, people getting in, passengers and stuff like that, kids, they might not care, you know? And it's good to put a piece inside here afterwards because that actually helps minimize this area failing um, or completely eliminating it. And if it does fail, it's just one piece that you have to put inside again afterwards. So just letting you know. Now, is it your fault? Probably not. But What's really beautiful about this, and let's just rip that piece off, is that this entire front end of the handle has absolutely zero wrinkles, okay? Even underneath, completely underneath, it is 100%. It's probably one of the best undersides I've ever seen in my life for a door handle. Um, you can do this by hand, sure, but it's definitely not as easy. So when you see me do it, you're gonna notice the difference. Okay, that's, that's it. The pattern stretched out very consistently, very evenly. Now I can probably do this, but it could be a little bit different uh, depending on if I get this done in one shot or not. Let's, let's take this off. You can honestly knock your door handles out really fast with that tool. You may decide that you need it or not. It really depends on where you're at. If you have a lot of door handles to wrap, then, and you have a lot of cars coming in and out, then that tool like that would probably be very beneficial. Now let's do this as I would do it without the wrap you easy. I'm going to peel off the film. My piece is sized up approximately to what I need, so this would be more along the size that I need, but you can see that 
The inside is very similar. I could have definitely went with a smaller piece initially. Again, it was just scraps, right? Now I'm gonna take my heat gun and heat the film up, doing the same thing, but I'm trying to do this without getting any wrinkles. And I'm gonna start on the very front, as I did, and I wanna pull this back. Now watch what happens when I pull it back. Look at the wrinkles, okay? These are unavoidable. Why? Because I'm not able, so I'll explain what's happening here. I'm not able to keep tension on the top and the bottom of the handle and also at the very end of the handle. That causes this to happen. Now, if you had four hands, okay, if you had two extra hands, then yes, you could prevent that. So that would be a two-person job to have it as flat as I did. But with this tool, I didn't need an extra person. I just needed one hand and the tool held the film. So again, you can see the difference. I didn't try to not make this happen. I mean, I tried to not make this happen and it's gonna happen. I knew it was gonna happen because this happens every single time. My stretch on the brush metal is probably pretty good. You know, it's probably not bad as far as the consistency and the finish goes. Um, but now what we're doing by me pulling out these wrinkles is I'm actually potentially causing marks in the adhesive or anything along those lines where it could reduce the visual aesthetic in the end. Now there are, and you most likely won't be able to see those in camera, there are now some glue lines in the handle where those wrinkles were. Uh, this, there's a glue line right here. There's one right there, one there, and one there. So I see four. Only really noticeable when you're looking for them. If you don't know what you're looking for, you're probably not gonna notice them, but they're there. So I'm not getting the best possible finish in the end when it comes to the installation. And again, I tried. So, did my, did the front of my handle, front area of my handle, end up the same or similar to when I used the wrap you easy? Let's lift that up, make sure nothing's stuck to anything, and let's just heat the sides. It's probably pretty decent. Okay, it's not bad. I do, however, have some wrinkling in the front. Okay, almost inevitable. It's gonna happen a little bit, little bit. Let's check out this side. So I'm just gonna lift that up, make sure it's floating and then heat it and see if that one shrinks down. Okay, not quite, not even as, not even as tight at all compared to the wrap using. I did try to pull that across. So I'm just gonna balance that out. But again, I had to lift that to balance that out. And that's not great, again, to have to lift it. But more or less, the handle is wrapped, it's secure. My pattern is in good shape and this is doing it by hand. I do have glue lines in the film. I had to troubleshoot by pulling out the wrinkles while when using this, I didn't have any wrinkles to troubleshoot or pull out. My edge around the bottom side, let's just heat it and see if we can have no wrinkles, I doubt it. Right in the very front, especially right there, we have some right around that corner, we have some as well. It's not gonna be the same. Is it good? Is it gonna last? Yeah, it's gonna last. You know, it's, you know, if I noticed the glue lines were really bad, would I do it again? Yeah, of course, you know, but you know, you don't necessarily have to have this tool, but you will get a faster and better result in the end. I just showed you that. Um, this tool just more or less made me more of a more professional um, at my job. And we're gonna have just the best possible end result. So I don't need to wrap inside here or whatever. This is more or less to show you how easy it can be to wrap a handle. I want to show you using a tool versus doing it manually and the difference between those two things. Again, the key point right here is the fact that the brush metal is consistent and that might not be easy for everyone to accomplish that, um, doing it by hand. So the tool keeps everything consistent. On top of that, there is no tension at all on the ends of when I use the tool versus this area. Yes, it does have a little bit of tension, but it's not terrible. Um, will it last? I'm confident that it will last, but it could, could have just been better. And then also, um, it's just easier. You don't have to troubleshoot any wrinkles uh, by pulling them out. So you're gonna get an, actually a nicer finish in the end across the actual surface of the handle. Again, these can be very small things, but if you wanna step your game up, definitely the way to go. If you wanna make things a little bit easier, definitely the way to go. Guys, I hope that this video, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I hope this video is was informative and helpful and showing you a newer product on the market as far as tools go. Uh, you decide whether you need it or not. I did, again, I just showed you the positives about it. Can't really think of any cons about it other than maybe using a tiny bit more material, but that's super minimal. Like we're talking pennies uh, in material cost. So I wouldn't worry about that part. 
I will show you the Sharkfin antenna version, which I think is super beneficial as well because wrapping Sharkfin antennas is not always that easy either. Probably a little harder than door handles, but we'll get into that version as well. It's a little bit different than that one, similar, but different. Anyways, I hope this video was informative and helpful. I look forward to doing more videos for you. Thank you for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Take care.